The Warbles of House Chickadee Drive are hereby summoned as sponsors of this video. The Game Table Cafe is their local entertainment hub of choice. In this video, we'll be looking at the first character, the Knight. In order for the Knight to win, they must reduce the Dragon's health to a value of zero. If no dragon is in use, their goal is to smash five crystal tokens throughout the cave and leave the cave through the entrance tile. The knight setup is simple. First, the knight's health is set to seven and her grit to zero. The knight piece is placed on the entrance tile and these bomb tokens are placed near the player board. Her side quest deck is shuffled and three side quests are drawn into the player's hand. These are hero cubes. Two are placed near the player board. The rest are placed on the grit track on the 5, 11, 18, 26, and 35 white spaces. The knight's turn consists of two phases. One, pick up hero cubes. Two, move and act. Once these are finished, the knight's turn is over. Before ending her turn, the knight may assign any unused hero cubes to her statistics or to certain treasure or equipment cards. The knight has three statistics. Movement is the distance and tiles that the knight may move on her turn. Perception is the number of encounters the knight may have on her turn, and this also affects her interactions with the thief. Strength allows the knight to make attacks and defend against attacks from others. On every turn, each statistic begins at 1. Phase 1. Pick up hero cubes. The knight picks up all hero cubes placed on her player board, except for those on the grit track and those that have been discarded. The knight may allocate these hero cubes at any time during her turn to increase statistics, use equipment, or make use of any acquired treasure cards. For example, placing a hero cube on the movement statistic allows the knight to move on her turn. Placing a hero cube on this ancient map equipment allows her to move through walls. Placing a hero cube on this pixie lantern treasure card allows her to increase her movement and perception by one. Hero cubes remain where they are placed until the next pick up hero cubes phase. If a cube must be discarded, it is placed on the discarded hero cube space on the player board. The cave bread event card allows her to recover her discarded hero cube, so be on the lookout for that. The knight may never lose or discard her starting two hero cubes. Phase 2, Move and Act. In this phase, the knight can move to adjacent tiles using movement. She may also spend encounters equal to her perception. These can be done in any order, but the knight may only move while she has encounters remaining. Spending an encounter allows the knight to perform certain actions. These actions are the following, and they are taken in this exact order. 1. Reveal and Resolve Dark Tile. 2. Resolve attacks against crystals or another character. 3. Collect treasures. If an encounter is spent, the knight can take any or all of these actions. Anything that is attacked or collected must be on the knight's tile. Revealing new tiles. If the knight moves onto a dark tile, she must spend an encounter to reveal and resolve that tile. After resolving the new tile, the knight gains one grit. Event Tile. In order to resolve, the cave player plays an event card on the knight. If no cave player exists, the knight draws and resolves an event card herself. These event cards have either positive or negative effects. For example, fresh water allows the knight to regain health, whereas rats causes the knight to lose two grit. If the knight enters or begins her turn on a tile with an event token, she resolves it as well, then removes the token from the map. Ambush Tile First, the knight may assign more hero cubes to strength. After that, the goblins may attack the knight with a hidden goblin tribe, as long as its strength is greater than the knight's. When a tribe attacks, she loses one health, the goblin tribe scatters, and the goblin's rage decreases by one. Treasure Tile A treasure token is placed on the tile. The knight may pick this up as part of the encounter or leave it alone. Crystal Tile A crystal token is placed on the tile. The knight may smash it as part of this encounter or leave it alone. Vault Tile in games with a thief, when this tile is revealed, a vault token is placed on the tile. The knight's main goal is to get to the dragon. Let's talk about that. While the dragon is underground, the knight can enter his tile without spending an encounter as long as she does not attack him. Attacking costs an encounter. If the dragon is on the surface and the knight wishes to enter his tile, the knight's strength must be equal to or greater than his armor. When doing this, she must attack him as an encounter. While the dragon is underground, the knight may only attack him if she uses her bomb. She may do this once per turn. Using the bomb for attacks does not use her tokens, and she can use the bomb action to attack the dragon, even if she has no bomb tokens left. Once the collapse has begun, and the dragon is still underground, the knight does not have to use the bombs to attack, but may still only attack once per turn. Once the dragon is on the surface, however, she can attack without using her bomb multiple times. 
She may do this by spending separate encounters without moving. When attacking, if her strength is greater than his armor, her attack is successful. If her strength is equal to his armor, she must roll the dragon die. This attack is a success if the die affects the center tile. Attacks cause the dragon to lose one health, and once the dragon has zero health, he dies and the knight wins the game. Goblins The knight may enter a tile with a revealed goblin tribe if her strength is greater than the tribe's. She must then attack the tribe as an encounter, which causes it to scatter. If she enters a tile with multiple tribes, she attacks all of them with the same encounter. The Thief The knight may enter a tile with the thief. To attack him, the knight's perception must be greater than the thief's stealth. If she attacks him, the thief dies, and she gains grit equal to his loot drop level. Smashing Crystals If the knight's strength is 3 or greater, she may smash any crystal on her tile. It is then placed on the smashed crystal space on her board, and she gains 2 grit. The knight may also collect treasures and gems using encounters. Multiple tokens can be collected during a single encounter, with each resolved one at a time. Dragon Gems If one of these bad boys is collected, the knight rolls the dragon die. If it affects the center tile, she loses 2 grit. If not, she gains 5. The dragon gem is then returned to the dragon. Treasure The cave draws 2 treasure cards and gives one to the knight. The other is returned to the bottom of the deck. If no cave player exists, the top card is drawn by the knight. At this point, the knight can either keep the treasure face down and use it later, or decline the treasure, removing it from the game in order to gain 5 grit. If no treasure cards are left, she gains 5 grit for each collected treasure. The knight also has these side quests. During her turn, she may reveal a side quest from her hand if the card's requirement has been satisfied. For example, Eagle Eye is satisfied when she shoots another player with a bow. Before completing these, she gains the number of grit shown in the right upper corner. The card is discarded from the game, and a new card is then drawn. Shown here, the knight gains grit or loses grit for these activities. Finally, the knight's equipment. These are pretty intuitive, but we'll look at a couple of specifics. We know the bomb can be used to attack the dragon, but if placed on a wall, that wall is permanently removed. The shield prevents the knight from being moved, and also minimizing loss of grit, but it must be activated before those effects come into being. This bow shoots visible tribes at an unlimited range, which reduces its population by your strength minus one. It does not cost an encounter to use. The ancient map allows the player to move through one wall, up to three times. And this concludes our video on the night. The executive sponsor of this series is Mario Flores. The wall sponsors are Panda GM and Zach Rohr.